For nearly the last 60 years, the Toyota Corolla nameplate has been an intricate part of the compact family sedan segment. In fact, when Toyota introduced the all-new 12th generation back in 2019, it really raised the bar on what I expected a Toyota Corolla to be in terms of a compact mainstream family sedan. Now, last year, Toyota managed to sell a little over 230,000 Corollas here in the US, despite America's insatiable appetite for SUVs. This right here was the best-selling compact family sedan that you could buy. Now, for 2024, the Corolla stays pretty much the same, although I haven't had a chance to show you guys all the changes that Toyota made to the Corolla family back in 2023. As you can see this week, Toyota has loaned us a new model that was introduced last year, a Corolla Hybrid S. SE with all-wheel drive. It marks the first time that we can get all-wheel drive with the hybrid powertrain. And the big question I want answered for those of you who have been looking for a mainstream family sedan, but you wanted something with better fuel efficiency and all-wheel drive grip, how does the 2024 Corolla SE stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling changes that Toyota made in 2023, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, there was a time where Toyota offered a choice of three different powertrains on the Corolla. The GR Corolla is, of course, reviewed separately. In 2023, Toyota discontinued the base 1.8 liter engine. The two liter gas engine is the standard engine. However, most people might be interested in the new hybrid powertrain, which they introduced in 2022. It got a pretty nice horsepower upgrade and all wheel drive for 2023. Now underneath this hood, there's a big mess of wires. It's not the prettiest looking engine, but this powertrain is essentially the 1.8 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that runs on the Atkinson cycle. It's essentially a more efficient variation of the old non-hybrid 1.8 liter gas base engine. It's paired up with two electric motors. So there's an electric motor in the front and a separate rear electric motor at the back, giving this vehicle electronic all wheel drive. Uh, the power output Toyota says combined is 138 horsepower. The uh, rear electric motor Motor supplies about 40 horsepower on its own. The front electric motor supplies around 91 horsepower on its own. 138 is a decent number. It practically matches the output of this car's main rival, the Elantra Hybrid, which offers 139 horsepower. We don't know how much horsepower the upcoming 2025 Civic Hybrid is going to have, although I suspect it'll have around 150, which is the same as the old Honda Insight. Now, it all goes out through a continuously variable transmission, an eCVT, uh, and it has around a 1.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. So it's a small battery. This is a full hybrid, but it's not a plug-in hybrid. Now, uh, in terms of the fuel efficiency, you can get a Corolla hybrid to get up to 48 or just over 50 MPG. Um, that is for the base LE version. This SE with all-wheel drive drops the fuel economy to 47, 41, and around 44 combined. That number is still very good, although if you guys are comparing this car to something like the Prius, Toyota's you know, newest hybrid, the Prius offers between 5 to 10 MPG better, depending, of course, on the trim level. Uh, and 138 horsepower is around 17 more ponies versus the 2022 Corolla Hybrid that I tested about two years ago. Now, zero to 60 times, Toyota doesn't quote it. We got 10 and a half seconds for the last generation or the 2022 model. I expect this model to be quicker. It has a top speed of around 107 miles an hour. And because this vehicle has all wheel drive, it has that separate rear electric motor. As this Corolla sits, it weighs in at just over 3,200 pounds. So it's about 200 pounds heavier versus the front wheel drive version of the Corolla Hybrid. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling changes that Toyota made for 2023. Now, you guys know this generation was introduced back in 2019. It's built off of Toyota's TNGAC architecture. You can see uh, the styling of this car definitely got a lot, a lot sportier when this generation was introduced. My particular test car is painted in this dark blue color called Blueprint. It's actually a free color. Uh, Toyota offers several different colors, obviously, on the Corolla. This is one of my favorites, although it's a very, very dark blue. You can see all Corollas got new LED headlights. You can see the SE has a new uh, LED daytime running light that has a different design. It has an LED low and high beam. No fog lights, however, but it is nice to see full LEDs on every Corolla model. You can see the Corolla, or the Toyota badge there has a blue outline to show it's a hybrid. The SE gets its own sport mesh style gloss black gray grille which definitely gives it a more aggressive look. You also have a more aggressive front splitter. I would have liked to see fog lights on this vehicle, but overall, I do think the Corolla's styling still looks aggressive, although it definitely doesn't look quite as nice to me as the new Prius. I definitely prefer the styling of the new Prius, 
which the two vehicles technically are on a similar architecture. Now moving around the side profile, this vehicle has a 106.3 inch long wheelbase. It's around 182.5 inches long. This is about an inch longer than the Prius and it has about a two inch shorter wheelbase, however. Uh, compared to the Elantra Hybrid, the Elantra Hybrid is almost two inches longer than this vehicle, so keep that in mind. The new Civic is also a bigger vehicle whenever the hybrid model comes out. This Corolla SE is a new trim last year. Previously, Toyota only offered basically an LE with hubcaps on the Corolla Hybrid, but they've definitely expanded that. You can see the SE includes these gorgeous five-spoke style dark graphite gray uh, alloy wheels. They're an 18-inch wheel wrapped in a 225 by 40 R18 tire. So these wheels definitely look more aggressive versus uh, the wheels you get on like a Prius, for example, and they're also fatter by 30 millimeters. Remember, the Prius has a very skinny 195 width tire that aids in the efficiency. This is one of the reasons why the Corolla has less efficiency. You have a 10.8 inch front disc rotor, uh, and then you have a 10.2 inch rotor at the back. So four wheel disc brakes and an all independent suspension setup. That's something you don't get, for example, on like a Mazda 3, which is crazy to think that a Corolla has an independent all suspension versus a Mazda 3, which has a twist speed. Now looking at the side mirrors, you can see they're body colored, integrated turn signals, they're not power folding. Uh, the sunroof is included with the premium package that my tester has. You can see the uh, gray or the black trim around the window uh, is definitely a nice addition versus the chrome that you get on an XLE trim. There's a new all wheel drive badge here to let everybody know you have an all wheel drive Corolla. If you see that badge on a Corolla, on a Corolla sedan, it has to be a hybrid because you can't get all wheel drive on the gas version. And then looking at the rear, you can see the rear end design certainly hasn't really changed. The front got some updated lights. The rear pretty much to me looks the same. You have uh, basically an all incandescent design, although I think the brake lights might be LED. The turn signal on the reverse light you can see is incandescent. The SE includes this little tasteful rear spoiler. There's also an SE badge here in red and a hybrid badge. The SE also gets a more aggressive rear diffuser and a single exhaust outlet with dual chrome tips, which definitely gives this you know, vehicle a more sportier design. I kind of wish Toyota would offer the XSE grade in the hybrid configuration as well, only on the gas only version, which basically you know, limits the appeal of the XSE. Opening up the trunk, you can see the Corolla is a conventional trunk. It offers a 13.1 cubic foot you know, of total capacity. If you fold down that, that seat back there, you can obviously expand it with a 60-40 arrangement. The Corolla Hybrid, however, uh, does not include a temporary spare. Toyota deletes that to make room for the hybrid battery pack. Instead, you just get a fix a flat kit with an air compressor, so kind of keep that in mind. Just also keep in mind, if you're looking at a Prius, the Prius offers roughly twice the cargo capacity because it's a hatchback. So the exterior styling changes are pretty minimal for 2023 last year, but let's go ahead and hop inside the interior and show you guys the differences on this SE grade hybrid. Before we get inside, however, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Toyota Intelligent Access key. It's standard on the, X, the SE trim. If you guys go for an LE, you'll have basically an in-key remote without the smart key, which is optional as part of a convenience package. You can see it has your usual lock, unlock. You can also remote open the trunk and use the panic function. If you push the lock button three times in sequence and then hold it on the third Third time, this vehicle also comes with remote start. You can also access the vehicle through your Toyota Connected Services app if you guys would like. As I approach the door handle, you can see traditional door handle. There's a little ridge area here. If I touch that, that will lock the door for you. Toyota Corollas don't have power folding mirrors. If you touch the back of the door handle, that unlocks the door for you. Toyota sadly does not do an auto walk away lock or unlock feature like some competitors. Now looking at the interior, you can see uh, the nightshade uh, or the, the, the dark blue exterior is complemented nicely by this kind of moonstone gray sport fabric seat that comes on the SE trim. If you guys are looking for a leather soft text material, you have to step up to the XLE trim. Um, where Toyota offers a black or like a two-tone macadamia beige interior. These seats offer like, it looks like a four-way or six-way manual, uh, manual adjustable for the driver. You can get a power eight-way on the XLE only with the soft tech seats. So on the SE, you just get manual seats and cloth seats, no heated seats. So basically very, very basic. Uh, you can see the door panel material has this nice two-tone where you have this soft touch injection molded plastic. You have some alloy accented looking door handle trim alloy trim along the actual door panel itself. A soft text area here with contrast red stitching, which is nice. Window controls. The front windows are one touch up down. The rears are also the same. So it's nice to see Toyota's putting one touch for all four, even on a Corolla. Hard touch plastic here with some, you know, storage cubbies. You have just a six speaker standard Toyota sound system. The JBL system is not available on this trim. If you go to the nightshade, you can get the JBL along with the XLE grade. Now stepping inside, with 5.3 inches of ground clearance, this vehicle does have a low step-in height. As I get in and shut the door, 
The door definitely has a tinny sound to it. That's what I noticed with this Corolla when it first came out. It doesn't have a really nice solid sounding thunk when you close the door. Now, uh, starting the vehicle up, you can see the power button is located here. This used to be blue accented, but as you can see now it's not. Push the button here, you can see it's a hybrid, so there's no traditional starter noise. And then the SE has uh, what you don't find very often anymore, and that's uh, very traditional analog gauges. In fact, it doesn't get much more simpler than this. You have a small 4.2 inch center helper screen, and then you have two big dials for the tack and the spinometer. This is actually different and kind of a downgrade from the 2022 Corolla that I last tested, which had a seven inch MID, although it was their older graphic system. If you guys want a seven inch digital display, you can step up to again, the XLE grade, which includes it, um, and it's a different style, uh, but this again looks very basic. You also have a small eight inch touchscreen here, which it's small by modern car standards, but it kind of fits the dash fine in the Corolla. It includes Toyota's latest connected services. So you have uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Go back to the native system here, you can see there's your built-in GPS if you'd like, all your sources are there. This is the biggest screen you're gonna find in a Corolla. So again, it's one of the reasons why you wanna go to a Prius, it has a bigger screen. The rest of the materials, you can see there's actually a soft touch material on the upper portion of the dash. It's also padded here with the faux stitching. You have single zone automatic climate control, which is a nice touch. Over here, it is hard touch plastic. The driver's wheel you can see, or the steering wheel is a leather wrapped. It's covered in the soft text leather. No paddles on the wheel. You can get paddles on the gas XSE Corolla. Um, the steering wheel itself has a manual tilt telescoping arrangement, offers a good amount of adjustability and range. The horn, it sounds pathetic. So <laughs> definitely uh, I would probably change that horn out if I actually was gonna buy this car. You can see you have actual buttons to control the screen here to control the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. Uh, and then down here, in the center console, you can see a wireless phone charging pad is included with the premium package. My iPhone 14 Pro Max fits perfectly in there. You have some nice, you know, two-tone look for the center console. This is all hard touch plastic. Uh, you've put the vehicle into reverse here. You can see there's your backup camera. It just has traject, or actually it doesn't even have trajectory, active trajectory. It has distance markers. Uh, and I don't believe any parking sensors. So again, it's a Corolla. You have to kind of you know deal with the fact that this is on the low end of the totem pole. I do appreciate the tr traditional shifter for the CVT. There's also an EV drive mode. If you have enough charge in the vehicle, you can actually can drive this vehicle in electric only uh, power assist. You can also go to an energy flow here and it'll show you how much charge the battery has, where the power is going. The graphics there look a little bit basic, but Toyota has been doing that kind of graphic for years. Your drive mode selector is here. The SE trim also adds a sport drive mode. You don't get that in the other trims. We'll try the different drive modes out when we go take this vehicle out for a drive. Uh, center console area here, you can see there are pretty decent sized cup holders, electronic parking brake. There's actually a brake hold feature, which is nice. Padded center console here, open this up. You can see your USB charging port is here, along with an actual 12 volt power outlet. There's another USB-C over here if you wanna connect your phone uh, via connection, or you can again do the wireless connectivity. The cloth seats, I must say, for a cloth material, they feel more high quality and less cheap than I expected them to. I just wish they were heated. On this trim, Toyota should include a heated cloth seat just to, again, make you feel like you don't have the cheapy cheap model, especially when it's cold outside. Open up the glove box, you can see it's a bin style, it's stamped not lined with felt. The mirror is not auto dimming. I think you can get that as a uh, dealer accessory, however. You have cloth on the headliner here. You have some LED map lighting, no LED ambient lighting in this vehicle. And then part of the premium package, my tester has a traditional sunroof. That's an extra 2000 bucks included with that premium package. So overall the interior offers no thrills. It offers, you know, materials which are average to slightly below average in terms of a quality. Build quality, however, is pretty strong. Tech is on the low end. Something like the Elantra is gonna offer a bigger screen even the new Honda Civic Hybrid that's coming is going to offer a bigger screen. So overall, the interior is a cozy fit, but it's also going to feel, you know, really familiar and just easy to get used to when you get into this cabin. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat because the Corolla Hybrid only comes as a four-door sedan, not as a hatchback. But opening up the door, you can see uh, the rear offers around 34.8 inches of legroom, which is fine. It's actually about the same as the Toyota Prius, but something like the Elantra Hybrid is going to offer around three more inches of legroom. Now, in terms of materials back here, here it is a different panel. This is hard touch plastic. It is nice and padded here at least, but you can see windows, they're still one touch up down for the rear. So that's definitely a nice touch. As I get in and get back here, you can see this is where I'd have the seat to drive. Let me shut the door. 
the door still has a somewhat tinny sound to it when you shut it but you can see for somebody my height I can get back here there's good foot space I can cross my legs but it's a little bit on the tight side no flat floor here it's almost nearly flat uh, but you do have USB C's back here no rear seat air vents wasn't expecting that nor was I expecting heated rear seats but I was expecting at least some kind of storage pocket in the front seat back that's nothing here you can see the head restraints are non-adjustable just like in the 2022 that I showed you guys you do have an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders which is nice and then in terms of the headroom space you can see as I lean back uh, the headroom space is getting a little bit tight. The sunroof takes up space, so something to keep in mind. Although I think the new Prius is kind of in the same boat as well. The back seat in this car honestly feels pretty much identical to the new Prius as well. So kind of keep that in mind if you guys are cross shopping the two. So here we are back behind the wheel of a Toyota Corolla Hybrid. It's been a little over two years since Toyota sent me one of these vehicles to drive. It got a pre pretty significant refresh last year where Toyota expanded the trim level family. Uh, they added all wheel drive for the first time. They added more power. So clearly um, Toyota is trying to expand the appeal of the Corolla Hybrid and it really shows in sales. This car accounts for about 20% of Corolla sales, uh, at least in 2023. So it's a pretty significant chunk of sales and this model here that we're driving is the new se the sport oriented version with a sport tuned suspension all-wheel drive hybrid which means we have a separate electric motor at the rear delivering 40 horsepower combined there's 138 horsepower and unreported combines torque of 156 pound feet so not you know, groundbreaking numbers, uh, about almost 60-ish horsepower less versus what you get in the Toyota Prius all-wheel drive, um, but it's still a nice chunk of power. So let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. Now, the last time I tested one of these, I got a little over 10 seconds. Let's see what we can get here. <laughs> Definitely not fast, but much quicker than before. 9.16 seconds so yes about a second a little over a second faster than the last corolla hybrid le front wheel drive that i tested about two years ago and that time pretty much is going to be in line with this car's main rival the hyundai elantra hybrid i tested that vehicle on similar stretches about almost two years ago as well the best time i got was 8.3 the slowest time i got was 9.2 or something like that. So that time is respectable. Now it is going to be about two seconds slower versus what you're gonna get in the Toyota Prius. Remember the Prius has the newer hybrid system with a bigger two liter engine. Um, the last time I tested one of those, I got like a little under, uh, a little over six seconds or seven seconds. So blisteringly quick for a Prius, but let's try it here this time without brake torquing it. That torque off the line from the electric motor is nice. And then you, of course, after that, you feel the engine kick in. The CVT is trying to hold the gears. It's still accelerating, come on. 10.6 there with it more going slightly uphill. So brake torquing it does make a difference, obviously, and being on a level surface. Because when you brake torque it, you can allow the engine to kind of build up the revs as opposed to having it wait to wake up. But again, 9.1 is a respectable time uh, especially considering the efficiency of this car and the mission of the Corolla. Now, I haven't had a chance to drive a two liter naturally aspirated Corolla in a while, but I suspect that model is going to be a little faster than this because again, that Corolla has uh, about 31 more horsepower, which is kind of strange. Usually the hybrid version of a Toyota product has more power than the non-hybrid. So clearly Toyota has some work to do. I mean, I would love for them to just stuff the Prius's powertrain in here. They're two liter with the newest hybrid system with 196 horsepower or 194 horsepower, but it would make the Prius a little bit obsolete, but still they could turn the wick up on this to have it push out, you know, 160 horsepower or at least match the output of the two liter naturally aspirated engine, which is like 169 horsepower. So it still would be about almost 20 horsepower less than the Prius. But I think that power figure would be more acceptable. But again, most people won't really care as much. The Corolla rides on Toyota's TNGAC architecture. So it's a little bit different versus the one in the Camry. Uh, we do have an all independent suspension and the SE also has a sport tune suspension. I'm noticing that the suspension definitely feels firmer than the last Corolla that I drove. Um, the steering feels quick, direct, sharp. It just doesn't have much in terms of feedback. Uh, let's go ahead and take a right here and put our foot down. Remember, the all-wheel drive system is powered by just a separate rear electric motor, uh, and it doesn't really have enough power to kind of let the, the, the back feel like it's gonna step out more. What you feel is a primarily front-wheel drive car, but 
Uh, this, the on-demand all-wheel drive system in this vehicle is much better versus the all-wheel drive system in the previous generation Prius, which only had like seven horsepower. This at least has 40 horsepower. So it's enough to give this thing permanent all-wheel drive when you need it to and get it up to speed. But let's try it here this time. I won't break torque it. Let's see for consistency. It feels quick off the line, so I can't really complain there. It just, man, it could use more horsepower. Come on, come on, Corolla. Let's see, get up to 60, my God. 9.4 there, so again, a 0.2 second improvement when you brake torque it, but in most real world conditions, you're gonna be doing in the mid nine second range in terms of zero to 60, which is fine, but it's not going to you know, light your hair on fire and make you think that this is a sporty car or anything like that. But I will say that the current Corolla handles well. It handles nicely. It has a good ride quality between handling balance. It's a little noisy in here. You do hear some road noise creep in. You hear the engine making some noise. I'll switch the drive mode here into normal, which is what, how most people are gonna drive it. Uh, it doesn't really have any active sound control. The engine's not being augmented through the speakers or anything like that. But what's nice about the Corolla Hybrid is it, it does offer an EV mode when the battery has enough power, enough charge, you can at low speeds, like below 20 miles an hour, creep along in electric only mode, which is definitely a nice little option if you guys prefer, or if you're driving around town or whatever, you're driving in the city and you just wanna drive along in complete quietness and, and silence. Um, right now, for example, the engine is shut off. I can hit this EV mode here again. I don't have quite, I'm going at least too fast for it to switch into EV mode only. But right now I am driving in EV mode, so uh, it is definitely a nice little touch. This is where the engine makes no, mo no noise because it's off. Put my foot down, I can sort of accelerate, but not really. The engine, the electric motor on its own doesn't deliver enough power to power this thing you know, at moderate speeds. Um, in EV only, and plus we have a very small 1.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. But, but this is kind of you know the point of a Corolla is you just drive it at seven tenths. It's a commuter car. You can see out of the vehicle nicely from the front, the sides, the rear. Uh, this car comes with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 now, so you have adaptive cruise control, lane trace assist, automatic emergency braking, um, rear cross traffic alert with blind spot monitoring. That all that all is included. Although I believe the blind spot is part of a package that you have to add for 600 bucks, part of like a convenience package. It's not standard, but all the other driver assistance stuff is standard. Uh, the seats are also comfortable. For cloth seats, which I hate cloth seats, um, Toyota actually does a pretty decent cloth. It feels, you know, not super scratchy or cheap. It feels soft, but it also feels like grippy as well, which is nice. I just wish the SE model had heated seats and a heated steering wheel. I mean, you can get heated seats on the XLE grade. That's the only trim for the hybrid Corolla to come with soft techs, they're fake leather. But again, all the other trims come with the cloth seats. I think for this price, Toyota should have thrown in soft techs uh, with heated seats, especially considering the you know price tag of this trim. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the fuel efficiency. This car, uh, is rated to get 47, 41 MPG, about 44 combined. That is good until you realize that the uh, LE trim with its smaller wheels is gonna do about four MPG better. And a Prius all wheel drive is gonna do about five MPG better. And if you go for an LE Prius, that's gonna go do around 10 MPG better. So clearly the newer powertrain and the slipperier aerodynamic shape of the Prius helps it get much better fuel efficiency. This car will do uh, theoretically 500 miles of range on a full tank, but in my weeks or the testing, I only averaged around 450 uh, because I was getting around 41 MPG in mixed driving. Now that is mostly highway driving, which is bang on with Toyota's number. On the high, on the city, this car, I got, I averaged around 44 MPG. So not bad, but again, you're going to do better MPG from a Prius, which will do closer to 50 MPG. Now you can do that in a Corolla if you step down to the LE trim, but remember the X, the SE trim, you know, has, or is less aerodynamic because of the bigger wheels and tires, which, you know, uh, aren't as slippery through the wind. They cr increase the drag. Um, but overall, you know, with an 11-gallon fuel tank, this thing is going to be cheap to run. It just isn't quite as efficient as the Prius, which is disappointing to say, but it's still, you know, not horrible. This is definitely still going to be more efficient than the regular Corolla, although I haven't had a chance to drive the 2.0-liter in a while. I'd be curious to think. I think I would think the hybrid version would probably get around 7 to 10 mpg better. But again, I haven't had a chance to test the two liter non-hybrid version in a long time. But overall, the Corolla Hybrid is still a very pleasant vehicle to drive, sportier than I expected it to be, still slow, but an improvement over the old uh, hybrid Corolla when it first came out. 
It's just for me personally, for the money that Toyota is asking, it's really tough to not just go with the Prius, especially considering the cars are about the same size on the outside and offer similar amounts of interior space. It's just gonna come down to which vehicle aesthetically, you know, is more pleasing to you and which vehicle is also more readily available at your local Toyota dealership. So about two years ago, when I first had a chance to test out the Corolla Hybrid, I wasn't too impressed with the overall package, simply because Toyota very much limited the appeal of the Corolla by only offering it as a base trim. Obviously, the company has rectified that for 2023, and for 2024, the only new change is the addition of a nightshade package, which essentially takes the SE trim here, adds some copper bronze wheels and some different black accents, and Toyota charges you $1,000 extra for it. Now, in terms of sales, I mentioned earlier, Toyota did around 232,000 Corollas last year, making this the best-selling compact mainstream sedan that you can buy here in North America. Around 20% of those sales were the Corolla Hybrid. This accounted for about 48,000 units, which is a roughly 50% increase versus the 2022 model. So obviously by Toyota increasing the power, adding all-wheel drive, increasing the trims, they have definitely improved the appeal of the Corolla Hybrid. And after spending a week with the X or the SE version, it's pretty easy to see why this remains the best-selling mainstream compact family sedans. Uh, it's still a really easy vehicle to drive on an everyday basis. In, per, in terms of the performance, zero to 60 in just over nine seconds is perfectly acceptable. Although the big elephant in the room is the fact that the Prius is around two seconds faster than this vehicle, zero to 60 for obviously not much more money. The interior definitely is simple and easy to use and well-made. The tech in this vehicle is also very simplistic, although also looking a little dated compared to the small screens that you can get in this wall versus uh, some of its rivals. And then in terms of the rear seat, the Corolla has slightly average to below average rear seat space. The trunk is also average. Handling dynamics is also sportier than I expected it to be, which is, you know, a testament of the sport tuned suspension of the SE trim. Really where the Corolla hybrid starts to fall flat on its face is when you compare this thing to the Prius hybrid. Now, if you look at a Corolla hybrid in terms of the base LE with front wheel drive, this model starts at $23,500. It's actually a very inexpensive new hybrid sedan that you can buy. It's actually one of the cheapest out there. It's about $1,000 cheaper than the Elantra hybrid, this car's main rival, and Toyota charges about $1,500 extra versus the gas-only version of the Corolla. So it seems like a no-brainer. However, if you guys want all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive is $1,400 extra. So now you're talking about basically a $25,000 Corolla LE trim. The SE trim is going to start at around $25,500 plus $1,400. So you're looking at around $27,000 for an all-wheel drive SE with the premium package that my test car has that rolls in the sunroof. Um, and a couple of other niceties on the inside. This model here with destination comes into just under $30,000, around $29,655. That is definitely a very high number for a Corolla. I mean, basically we're talking about $30,000. Now I know this is technically the higher trim version, but if you guys want, you know, soft text leather and heated seats, you have to go up to an XLE, which doesn't offer all wheel drive and doesn't have the sportier look of the SE trim. I personally prefer the look of this. A nightshade package with the JB Audio will basically come in at just over $30,000, which I know is a lot of money for a Corolla. And also keep in mind that you could also buy a Prius. A new Prius LE with all-wheel drive is around uh, $29,000 as well. So at that level, I personally would rather just go for the Prius, but the Corolla does offer a more traditional sedan look. It has technically bigger wheels and tires. You might be able to get one of these a lot easier versus a Prius because Priuses in general, Toyota has been having trouble keeping up with demand versus this vehicle. I suspect Toyota is probably be able to produce these a lot faster and easier. That's probably why you're seeing higher sales. But overall, if you guys are looking for a compact sedan that just happens to be a hybrid, the Corolla hybrid is certainly worth a look. But for me personally, I probably would just spend a little bit more or wait and be a little more patient and just look for a Prius for a little bit more money. It gets more power. It has better fuel efficiency. Uh, it's a lot quicker and it has more tech on the inside. And for me, those features are all no brainers to kind of go for the Prius. But if that doesn't matter to you, the Corolla Hybrid is obviously still worth a look. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 Toyota Corolla Hybrid SE with all wheel drive. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.